everyone, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo! Last time, we rejected Misha's advances, and later found out that she's actually been kind of depressed. Like, pretty much the happiest girl in the game has been having some kind of suicidal thoughts. Also, she likes Shizune. <sighs> you know, I know that Katawa Shoujo is a naki gay, like I said earlier, but this is still sad. Well, hopefully things will get a bit better from here. So! Oh, by the way, Act 3 ended, and now this is the beginning of Act 4. Which I'm assuming is the fi- Which I'm pretty sure is the final act of the route. So, no more talking. <clears throat> Let's get into it. <clears throat> Only a day later, the weekend has already arrived. I drop a heavy stack of books on the librarian's desk, not meaning to slam them, but they waste so much that it happens anyway. Yuko bolts out of her chair with enough force to dislodge her glasses. She barely holds onto them. Oh, hi! Sorry, I'm here to return all those books I was supposed to. Finally. That's great, but I wish you had brought them back sooner. It wouldn't be a problem if the library had more copies of everything, but it doesn't. And they act like that's my fault. Alright! Who do I need to punch? Because it's clearly not your fault, Yuko. They? Other students. They can be, um, pretty pushy. Sorry, it just kind of slipped my mind. It's been a pretty rough couple of days. Oh, um, I suppose you don't want to talk about it. Not really. Yuko meekly turns to the, to the task of, watch of logging all the books I've brought back as returned, treating them with extreme care and precision, like she's a bomb disposal disposal technician rather than a librarian. Over the past couple days, I've been, I've been thinking about something Misha said. Of course, I've thought about everything she said, but one thing in particular keeps coming back. She talked about how she doesn't want to miss people or think about being apart from them anymore. When I recalled those words, they stopped me cold, like a sharp slap across the cheek. In just a few months, we'll be graduating. Misha and Shizune were nearly inseparable, but after her graduation, they might never see each other again. I wonder if that thought is what started all of this. You know... It is... also... pretty sad. I mean... graduating and not seeing all those people you went to school with ever again. Like, I graduated from high school a couple of years ago, and every once in a while, I do think about, about the people I was friends with in school, you know? Some of them I still talk to, although admittedly not as often as I should. Some I haven't talked to since graduation, but still. If Misha were to try to talk and talk to Shizune about it, Shizune likely wouldn't think about it at all. It would sadden her, and for that reason, she would try and toss it away. For someone like Shizune, who is so quick to, to suppress her worries, it would be easy. Misha turned out to be more sensitive than she seemed. It would have crushed her, even more so because Shizune's reaction could come off as pretty cold. I don't know if that's how Shizune handled it, but it seems likely. And I can understand why she would act that way. I can also understand why Misha would be troubled by the thought of drifting away from someone who was such an important part of her. I never thought about graduation until that moment. Then I began to think things like, has it really only been less than a year? I started thinking of everyone I've met. Not only Shizune and Misha, but everyone else. They were fond thoughts. Then I thought of losing them. Suddenly I could understand Misha's anxieties. It could be nice to talk to someone about it. Actually, I kind of want to. With whom? I can sense an obvious tinge of apprehension in her voice. With you. Uh, 
Really? Are you sure? Why me? I mean... You're nice to talk to. Because you're an adult. That's it? Uh, that's... Wincing, she fidgets a little in her seat, trying to get comfortable in a pretty uncomfortable looking way. I guess this means she's okay with it. Is it hard being an adult? Yes. Agreed. I don't think I'm that old, though. It's surprising that students now, like Shizune and you, wear stuff like perfumes or cologne. I never did. I still don't use them. Um, by the way, you're not wearing your grape cologne today. My grape cologne? Oh, you mean that! No, I'm not wearing it today! Don't you worry about that! No ruin books! I mean, what? Yeah, it wasn't working out for me. Oh, that's good. I thought the same thing. Sorry. Yuko looks genuinely sorry, sorry, and I feel a pang of guilt. I smile despite myself. A tiny lie like that can, can come back to bite me in the butt. For Misha, trying to conceal how she felt in order to put on a happy face for Shizune for so long must have been crushing. Someone I know brought up that we're going to be graduating, and I realized that I've never thought about it before. I feel stupid that I could go so long and never think about these things. I've met a lot of great people, and I've never thought about what's going what, what it's going to be like to graduate and maybe never see them again. There are still ways you could keep in touch. Yeah, I guess. I feel childish. I know everyone is going through the same thing, probably. I bet you hear this kind of problem a lot. No... I haven't been working here that long. I worried about the same thing when I graduated from high school. Um, I didn't go to school here, though. I also miss my friends. And I wish I had kept in touch with them better. I should have tried harder. I understand how you feel. Yuko isn't really helping me feel better, and she clams up quickly when she sees it on my face. I don't want to look back and have those same regrets. I wonder if Shizuna even thinks about that kind of stuff. Because she goes on sometimes about how she doesn't want to live with any regrets. Wow, that sounds impossible to me. I nod, only halfway wanting to agree. Even so, I think that is kind of admirable too. Kind of brave, don't you think so? Brave is a new way to put it. Yuko shakes her head insistently. It's true though, and also kind of intimidating. Jeez, you shouldn't be intimidated by high schoolers. I'll try. She turns away to start pulling a sticky note over and over. Pretty idle behavior for a university student. But more importantly, I wonder if I said the wrong thing to her. Being around Shizune for so long, I can't stop reading as much as I can into every moment of silence. If Yuko were the type of person who didn't get in intimidated by high schoolers, it probably wouldn't be so easy to talk to her. It's all too easy to want to shed some negative quality of yours. When I think of everyone I know, it's those qualities that I like the best. Um, I don't think I really regret it. I thought, as long as I can remember the good times, that was enough. You know, Yuko does have a point there. I mean, as long as you can remember the good times you had with the people well, I, you hung out with, then... nice, you know? I don't know. Sorry. I noticed a couple students starting to trickle into the library and decide that my time is up. No, that was helpful. I feel like two of my friends are fighting because one of them is taking the fact that we might not see each other again after we graduate really hard, and the other is probably being stoic about, probably being stoic about it, which only makes it worse. I don't get how I'm supposed to handle this kind of situation. It doesn't seem like the kind of problem where I'll have to end up taking a side, but it could turn out that way, and, and then I have no idea what I'm going to do. You should tell them they shouldn't fight. I know, fighting is bad. Mm -hmm. It's not Shizune and Misha, by the way. You really think she's going to believe you? Okay, um, I wasn't really thinking that, though. How embarrassing. Even though I knew it would be, I still feel my cheeks redden, and even so, I still said something so tr- Parent and blatantly a lie. But it could be that sometimes that is the right way. Do you have any books about people who have to make hard decisions? 
We have a lot of self-help books. It's funny that I can find that surprising because I won't, won't have because I wouldn't have it only a few months ago. I meant about, not for. There aren't many, right? Yes. Um, not many, I mean. Though I feel a bit apprehensive about it, I want to talk to Shizune. I don't understand why I feel nervous about it, and that disgusts me a little. It also motivates me to look for her right then and there, although I don't have to look very hard. She's in the student council room, as always. Worryingly, Misha isn't with her. Oh, no. When she suddenly notices me and looks up from her paperwork, the first thing I ask is where she is. I don't know. There is so much uncertainty in her answer that I can't just, like, go- That I can't, like, go just like that. She's missing a lot of school. Are you the attendance police? That's really strange, coming from the student council president! She suddenly hides a laugh behind a cup- Tan, and I start to think that I might be worrying for nothing, but then her laughter slowly fades away to a more serious and pensive expression. You're right. Yesterday. I catch the hint of a knowing smile on her face when she sees my poorly hidden pa panic at the word. Despite her best efforts, she can't help but being satisfied in the look dating surprise from everyone else to the very end. Even then, I can see that she has bigger concerns from how quickly her smile vanishes. Before either of you notice me, I saw what you were saying. I'm not stupid. If I hadn't, I could still see through Misha while we were walking back. Even if she hadn't told me everything er later. Even if she hadn't told me everything later. She didn't make a big deal out of it. But any way you look at it, it's my fault, isn't it? It's not your fault, Shizune! What did she tell you? Shizune winces at the question, though it's clear she's been expecting it. She follows it up with a very grand gesture. A lot. Like, that I can be selfish, and confusing. I try too hard to bring people around me and then push them away. I didn't know what I should do. I thought she was right to mention all those things, so I just agreed with her. But that only made things worse. I don't understand. Adjusting her glasses, she looks pretty tired. I hope it isn't because she's been busy avoiding Misha, but I can't help considering the possibility, seeing where this conversation is going. It's true. Even the student council being this small, and us be always being swamped with work, is my fault. I might have even end up driving a lot of people off, and away from the student council, acting like that. She suddenly wags a finger mischievously, acknowledging that MIGHT is an understatement. However, from how wearily she does it, it's obvious the humor is only to put me at ease, and therefore not genuine. Like Lily, for instance. She was the first person to join when I started trying to recruit people again after everyone else left. Because they couldn't stand me, I guess. We managed to put together the last festival, and even ran a booth together at the last minute. But I didn't like her because I thought she was selfish, always holding us up in order to tend to one friend of hers or another, and leaving Misha and me alone to sort out things with the whole involving the whole school by ourselves. If there were any problems she was going through, she would leave us high and dry while she panicked over it, and wouldn't come back until it was solved. She would focus on it 100% and be too preoccupied to focus on any student council work. That was the worst to me, that she could be so nice and still take so many people for granted. Why even join the student council then? It seems so short-sighted and selfish, don't you think? But it's actually me who's that way. Like Misha said, always trying to pull people close to me and then shutting them out. That's how I've treated her, which makes me a bad friend. And it feels like I did the same to you then, so I guess I'm, I'm a bad girlfriend too. Even if Misha says that you might as well replace her. I'm angry that I screwed things up for, enough for it to get this out of hand. All I wanted was to... She pauses to look for the right words, tenting her fingers in concentration. Make people happy, I think. Even though that seems like a simple way to put it. As she rests her head against my hand, she suddenly bangs delicately fall fall delicately across her eyes, hidden behind those polished glasses reflecting just the tiniest bit of light. It may be wrong to think so, but right now she seems especially beautiful. Like a more complete person. It feels like this is my first chance to respond to her outpouring of emotions. Replacing Misha as Shizune's interpreter? Misha must be joking! Yeah, she must be! Like... There is... No way I can imagine anyone, not even Hisao, as 
Shizune's interpreter except for Misha. I just can't. There's no way I can. And even if I tried, there's no way I can. Seriously. It took all my energy to keep up with her, her just now. Her signing filled with gestures that I've never seen before. Like, their habits picked up from Misha and developed from years of them being together. I can never replace someone so close to her. I like you because I like you. Not that I got tricked into it by you. Despite how hard she tried it, anyway, I continued to stare back into her eyes, as sharp as ever. The first time I saw them, they seemed a, they seemed a, they had seemed a bit intimidating to, intimidating to me, like the eyes of a predator. That hasn't, that hasn't changed, which I find reassuring. I still want to make everyone happy. Starting with Misha? She certainly looks a bit annoyed that I would imply she would start with anyone else, and smiles confidently, as though a friend's sadness is a physical opponent that she can just strangle into, into submission. Of course, obviously, naturally. Taking off her glasses. She looks nice without glasses, actually. She leans back in her chair and lets out a sigh. It's the first time I've seen her without them on, but I don't get a good look before she slips them back on. But I'm too tired to start today. First thing tomorrow. Do you want to help? Yeah. And I have other student council stuff you can help help me with while you're at it. Although it turns out there isn't much other work at all. All right. So. FBI, open up! That was an overused joke. There's no school today, so I expected to be able to sleep in late. Unfortunately, I'm awakened by someone merciless mercilessly pounding on my door at 8 in the morning. At first, I think it could be Kenji, but when my shouts of annoyance go unanswered, I realize it's Shizune. She immediately backs away from the door when I open it, quickly concealing something behind her back. Kind of ominous. What's that? Is it a surprise? I don't really like surprises. But this pleased expression on her face says that she wants me to stop up being such a wet blanket, but she's too busy fumbling with what's behind her back to sign it. It must be frustrating for her because seconds later she swings the object out, proudly, and also a little dangerously. Ta-da! A picnic basket. We can have lunch together, the three of us. Ooh, nice! It's not really a basket. It looks more like a plastic bag. Taking a quick look inside, I can see that most of the food inside is also store-bought, not my homemade. Some I am still have the, the price stickers on. Well, it's better than nothing, right? There's a very diverse selection in here, though. Even a tiny can of caviar. I'm slowly becoming more impressed with this lunch. I pick a grape out of there and pop it in my mouth. Don't just take things like that. I spent all night perfecting this final weapon. She suddenly places it down on the ground to free up her hands, and immediately starts playfully tapping it between her feet like a soccer ball. Definitely not what you should do to anything you're going to call a final weapon. All part of my get Misha to stop being so depressed plan. I saved all last night working on it. When we tried to order in last time, Misha barely got anything and used it as an excuse to leave early. I won't let her get off so easily this time. The food is already here. She'll have to sit down and eat with us. It's the perfect bait. Doesn't everything look so... Doesn't everything look irresistible? I tried to make it myself, but I don't know how to make it all fancy, so I ended up buying everything. Still looks solution, doesn't it? It should be. She's very perky today, juiced up on the thought of cheering Misha up. Although it's odd to see her so happy about it, I know she's just as unsure now as she was yesterday. The only thing that has changed from is that at, by viewing it as an other sort of challenge for herself, she can put her worries aside and throw herself into it recklessly. It's worked well enough for Shizune so far. It wouldn't surprise me if it's the only way she knows how to live. It's a little early, though. It's already 8 in the morning. That's late. Even me, she gets up at 8 or 9. She goes to bed at 7 p.m., but that isn't important. It's very important! Shizune ignores me, getting my hands by taking them in hers instead of a more proper rebuttal. The way she lingers against me a moment longer than expected feels really comforting. The point is, she's awake right now, walking around somewhere. Let's go find her. 
She sprints out the door impatiently, and her gusto as she drags me along looking for Misha make, it makes me feel more like I'm following a hunter on a safari than looking for a mutual friend. We don't have to look very hard. Even Crop Shore, her pink hair stands out. The fact that she's just meandering around the grounds out in the open makes it even easier. Easier. Now I'm so uh, now I'm sounding like a safari hunter. <laughs> Misha. Huh? We were just looking for you. It's a good day for a picnic. You should join us. We even have caviar. Not surgeon, of course, but really tasty. Caviar? Surgeon? Apparently finding it annoying to have to explain things, anything at length with only one hand, she suddenly gives up quickly. Fish eggs. What? It tastes good. Sorry, Shichan. I think I'll pass for today. Oh, no, you don't! When Misha starts to walk away, Shizune holds the bag out in front towards me, needing to take it so that her hands can be free. As soon as she's out of her hands, she darts in front of Misha, cutting her off. I made so much food, though. Sorry, I'm just not hungry right now. Oh, yes, you are! At least if Shizune has anything to say about it. When are you going to be hungry, then? Shichan, that's impossible to know! You can guess. The tension between them infuriates Shizune, and she's trying to deal with it by t trying to tear through it. But that approach isn't going to work. I thought, in hope, that Misha had gotten herself together, but I guess she was just cut too deep by what happened. In that case, it's really out of anyone's hands. I believe that Shizune might understand that on some level. If she didn't, she wouldn't have any doubts at all. Because she can't speak, though, I've learned to notice her hesitation. It's very clear. She might as well be screaming. Misha waves her hands in front of her, not wanting to continue the discussion any further, and quickly slips away. She's in a fume silently, reluctant to let her go, but having no way to keep her here. <sighs> as Misha's back grows smaller in the distance, I wonder where she's heading off to. Is she suddenly wondering the same thing as she bites her lip in frustration? I want to touch her reassuringly on the shoulder, but I stop myself, not knowing if it's the right thing to do. Not because she looks fragile, vulnerable, or sad. It's the opposite. After a while, her expression belies no emotion at all. Only contemplation. Suddenly, she whirls around. Now all this food is going to go to waste. Yeah. That makes me sad. That makes me mad. Although it's obvious she's only is more hurt than mad. The bag dangling from my hand feels like it's being filled with lead. Let's go on a date. Let's use it then. Oh! Interesting to know that they were both thinking the same thing. Well, basically the same thing. You know what I mean? Where do you want to go? I don't know. The roof. It's my favorite spot. A wry smile appears on her face, disappearing just as quickly. On the roof, I immediately crack open the caviar, or ignoring a derisive look from Shizune all the while. I end up putting it down immediately. Where are the toast points? I didn't make any. Like I told you, I bought everything. Not toast points, though. Why is that important? Anyway, they don't sell just toast points. That would be stupid. I bet they do! Maybe in stores for the exceptionally lazy, but not here. Why don't you use a tortilla chip? Or tortilla chip is not the same! They're both triangles. Stop being such a princess. I didn't know there was a proper way to eat caviar. This is the first I'm hearing of it. It's not the same thing at all! I can't be decadent like this. And anyway, how can she not know? She lives in a huge mansion. She then takes the opportunity to scoop half of the tin onto a single chip in the meantime. Hey! I'm sure it doesn't even taste good like that. Mm -hmm. There is too much food here for two people. Because we can't communicate with each other while we eat, she's in it. both she's in it, and I have a lot of time to sit in sounds and think about that. the fact that Misha, the person and she set this all up for, refused to be here! It's annoying that she isn't here. I can't even enjoy my a meal like this. I stare at the paper cup next to her, still half full of juice. I thought you didn't want all this food to go to waste. I wanted Misha to be here too. That was the whole point. 
I wasn't able to accomplish what I wanted to, so it doesn't taste good. You should eat it. Eat more. I want the fried things, though. You keep eating them all, even though they- You say they don't taste good. Fried things are always delicious. There's always an exception for them. You'll get fat! I think you're being too aggressive. It's like I told you yesterday. I'm only trying to cheer her up. Yeah, but it seems more like you're playing a military campaign. I'm only trying to take it seriously. And this is the only way I know how to take- how to do it seriously. I feel so powerless. I hate it. I can't even yell at her too, even though I want to. Yelling is for serious occasions, right? Yeah. You should yell at me, Shepherd Me. You can tell her that I want her to stop being so down. Even if she feels sad and alone, it's no reason to stay gloomy forever. Why don't you? I already did. Over a game of dice. Under over, to be exact. I won! Five times! Only the two of them would be able to take, take so, so much pride in winning games of pure chance. Then I tried to talk to her, but it didn't go so well, obviously. Well, so did I! I tried and failed! My goal has always been able- has always been to do everything better, though. Yeah, your one upmanship is really something. But I failed, too. That's why I want your help. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do anymore. For someone like Shizune, who has only ever interacted with the world by locking horns in, in every obstacle in her path, with her, every obstacle in her path, understanding only goes so far. I want to tell her that she doesn't have to worry, that she is great at cheering people up, because she managed to cheer me up my first week here. In retrospect, I must have looked kind. I must have looked, looked like kind of a jerk being in such a set or a mood from the moment I came here. Even though I don't think I was being unreasonable. Even having months to digest it, finding out that you have a heart defect like, like I did is hard to deal with. I've had had le less, less time to mull over suddenly being transferred to Yamaku on top of that. Spending the festival with Shizune really helped me out of a rut. I was happy, enough to forget that at the entire time it felt like she you were manipulating me. I understand now that I allowed myself to be manipul manipulated. Even though I felt like I was at the bottom of the world, I still wanted to have a normal life again, I'm sure, because I enjoy what I have now. I think it must be the same for everyone, including Misha. Everyone wants somewhere there to pu pull them up out of their self-pity. It's just that Misha always wanted Shizune to be that person, but because they can't be together, I think Misha feels that, that she can't accept Shizune's hand, and that frustrates Shizune. But if she can cheer her up a stranger like me, then she'll die trying with Misha. I can see it in her eyes, too. Though she tries to treat it like any other problem in her life, she certainly cannot do that with Misha's depression. She, her thought processes are entirely different, in some ways more careful, in some ways more reckless and frenetic. She cares that much more. I end up not saying anything. Partly because staying next to her like this, just the two of us, is pleasant enough in itself that I don't want to interrupt the moment with a question. And partly for a more cowardly reason. I started to think that they weren't, but I don't know if her actions that day might not have been an afterthought or even a fluke. Just a collection of coincidences. I don't know if that would change anything, but I'm uncomfortable thinking about it. The fence behind me trembles slightly, and I turn to see that it's because she's doing it, he has fallen asleep leaning against it. Considering she was up all night, it's not surprising. Where does all of that motivation come from? Not just in regards to Misha. I'm cynical, so it's hard for me to just accept that anyone can simply be that strong. My first thought was that maybe it's because she hates herself. It's very plausible. Leaning against her, I feel sad knowing that that might be the case. But it could be that we're, we're similar and that we both want to be better people. <sighs> well, at least we both want to be better people. here. Now, hopefully soon, we cannot, hopefully soon, 
Shizune, Hisao, and Misha can all be together again. Like a happy trio of friends. So, hopefully you're looking forward to next time. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want more of my content. That being said, thank you all for watching, and see ya in the next one. Yup, see ya!